the rubber legs has to be my favorite nymph pattern and I believe it's probably the most effective all-round nymph pattern out there it's also probably one of the easiest flies you can tie I tie it in two legs I found three legs doesn't matter and other fishermen like Lance Egan uses two legs just like this the materials like I said are very basic you just have two you have the body which is the uh, chenille and coffee black and I've tried other colors and coffee black just seems far and away the best color and other people have meant have talked about that as well I've tried uh, golden you know for like golden stones and I found it doesn't matter the fish prefer this coffee black color and for the legs I think it's important to get this larva lace uh, super floss and I, I like the light brown color but it seems like this larva lace brand, the, the floss is really, uh, has a nice action. It's kind of stiff, yet it'll move, uh, kind of, kind of wave in the water, I guess. Uh, versus other rubber legs, this seem kind of limp, you know, just kind of don't really have any lifelike action when they're in the water. When I'm tying the, the fly weightless, like like it is here, without a bead, then I'll use a uh, hot spot. And right here I have pink, although I've used orange mainly in the past, and that seems to work well. I'm using pink here because I'm going to be steelhead fishing tomorrow, actually, on the Klamath River for steelhead. And uh, pink is a pretty good color for steelhead. At least I've found that in the past. Like I was saying earlier, when you use two two legs instead of three, you can really whip whip these uh, these out really fast. Just cinching the uh, floss down. You want to make sure your antenna are kind of separated. I do that just by tying in the front a little bit, just to kind of cinch it down in the right direction. With the chenille, you want to kind of pull away the fibers a little bit to expose the thread underneath there. You know, that way when you tie it in, it'll be much easier. You can worry about trimming your, your legs and antenna after you get done. And if you kind of tie in really close to the uh, the floss, it will kind of get it straighter. Kind of make it more uh, stiff. And tie underneath it a little bit too. Also, when you wrap, you can kind of make those legs a little tighter by getting uh, close into them. And 
this hot spot, like I was saying earlier, and using pink because I'll be steelhead fishing, but I usually use uh, orange. I think it's also important to use orange whenever you're fishing around stone flies <coughs> or uh, salmon flies, excuse me. So they got a little bit of orange in them, in their bodies right before they emerge. So I think that could be kind of a trigger for the fish. <clears throat> you know, say if you're fishing a few weeks before a stonefly or a salmon fly hatch. I find you don't want to have the legs too long. Or the, or the tail and the antenna. You can use your best judgment. I think that's the kind of the, the key to this pattern are those legs, that silhouette that's riding through the water. I think it just drives fish crazy when they see that. Best sniff pattern out there. Greatest stonefly pattern by far. Uh, most stonefly patterns, people have learned over time that the more imitative they are or lifelike, um, they don't do quite as well as just the more basic, basic ones like this that don't really look too specific. <clears throat> 